You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Thank you for tuning in to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show for another week, another show. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Happy you're tuning in and listening to the program, whether you're listening on one of the 20 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2023. Through, a parent, through our parent website, which is the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, underneath the se- Season 7 tab at the top of the page, podcast replay, in-studio video replay, a radio app, however you're capturing the program. Thank you very much. If you want to be part of the program, you can certainly do that by sending us an email to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or call us anytime you want, toll-free, coast-to-coast at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-7469. Hardscaping, Holly. It is a term that may not be familiar to some of our listeners, but once we get done with this segment, we will all have a better understanding of what hardscaping is and how one may utilize it for their property. Right. So hardscaping is part of landscaping, and I think a lot of people... When they commonly hear the word landscaping, they think about things like um, whether it be flowers, shrubbery, trees, greens, uh, green greenery, things like that, vegetables, etc. And that is part of landscaping. Scaping the land. Right. Yeah. And then that's also softscaping. Hardscaping can be part of landscaping as well. But that's softscaping. So those are the soft elements, the horticultural parts um, and that the earthy is stuff. The earthy stuff, yeah. But that's what a lot of people think about when they think about landscape design. But then hardscape is all of the non-living elements. So that can be anything from concrete, brick, stone, wood, um, walls, patios, things like that. Even like an in- outdoor kitchen can be that. And then also include with that is water features. So hardscape can be like a patio, a patio yeah. deal with the, however you want to adapt that to your uh, home yeah so we'll kind of get into into that okay um anything that is essentially not not natural so many of our listeners whether they understood or knew the term they have that probably incorporated somehow on their property yeah i mean even something like a um like a wood chip or a gravel path or walkway that would be considered a hardscape because uh-huh. it's not it's not of the the horticultural world variety. Okay. So the first one we can talk about going into that is walkways. And walkways can be anything from like you say gravel to concrete to cobblestone to brick, fill in the blank, whatever you want to lay down, natural or man-made, that is a form of hardscape. Yep. And so the purpose of a walkway is obviously for walking, designated area, but, but it can also tie a property together or it can separate them Mm -hmm. so you can do something like um okay this is my walkway to to the garden or this is my walkway to the vegetable garden or to the 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 creek in the back right yeah or to um and this this is the red gravel goes to the creek and then the green i don't know there's green gravel but let's say there's a green gravel and that goes to the garden okay you can kind of separate it that way or you can just well if if it's yellow it goes to the the wizard of oz yeah to emerald city yeah yeah and that's a whole falsehood of its own but that's (laughs) that's a horse of a different color Uh uh-huh and the man behind the curtain yeah uh so another one is fences yeah so this is another case where fence is definitely i mean any of this is and and this doesn't have to be a designation between it can be but not for the purpose of that's my neighbor you stay on that side this is mine you can incorporate fencing inside of your own perimeter as a differentiation between different areas of uh you know your your geographical i don't know your zones in your backyard i i used to watch i can't remember what show it was but they had um, it was a family that had a lot of pets, and uh-huh. they made a pet cemetery, and they had a nice little area for burying if, their pets. If you've got that many <laughs> pets, and I'm sure a lot of listeners do, but if you designate a part of your mm-hmm. property as a cemetery, that's commitment. Yeah, and it had like a more of like a wrought iron, uh, iron, uh-huh. an old um, old timey cemetery look. Yeah, yeah. old timey cemetery look. See, so, on the farm when we had one of those. 
pass away, there is a portion in the back area where we just dug a hole, and that's where it's at. So you had a pet cemetery, but it wasn't designated. Uh, a couple of dogs, a couple of rabbits, some birds, some sheep. Oh, yeah, the sheep. Yeah. Do you want to tell any stories no, about the no, sheep? No, no. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so fences, aside from a pet cemetery, you can use it to designate a sitting area, a garden area, whatever. Um, and you can even incorporate fencing with different soft elements like maybe some shrubbery maybe mm-hmm. some trees whatever um so that that's an option and then we also have decks and patios decks and patios and this is probably most common most commonly thought of when you think about hardscaping a lot of people think about that that part as the the hardscaping um and so this is something that you can you can again just choose whether it be like stone pavers wood etc even just a pounded gravel some people, you know, the expense of a, a concrete or a brick patio, there's a quite a level of expense. Some people can't afford that, so they bring in very nice gravel and that uh, they adapt that into their backyard patio. Some people also just like the feel of the gravel and then they'll put like a fire pit mm-hmm. and then that does give them kind of the, the camping feel. Right. Um, and then they can enjoy that. And, and a hardscape can be that campfire or that fire pit whether it's natural or natural gas or you know natural you light it with a lighter fluid and wood yeah. some people have propane or, or natural propane. natural gas propane and propane accessories yeah yeah, yeah that's right bobby <laughs> yeah so decks patios um or some people call them a, a line, which is like is the, that a french word i think it's like the hawaiian word. oh okay i don't know but there's the whole yeah there's the whole we do have listeners in Hawaii on the download, so there you go. Right, and it was popular on Golden Girls. Oh, okay, was that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so the decks, patios, whatever, those are <coughs> another hardscaping element. And then stairs, now most people might not have stairs, but if you have maybe like a slope or if you yeah. live along a lake. A transition or, from levels of, of on the property, yeah. Yeah, or like a river, live along some body of water, you might need to, to incorporate some stairs and it might be something that you want because you don't want to have to like heave it up a hill right and the stairs that that's the personal preference you can have very elaborate or very simplified uh boards and and holding the uh the terrain back or you can have very large stones or or blocks of grab or blocks of rock as your stepping mechanisms from transition from up to down i think that sometimes a lot of these you know you could incorporate Simply on your own, whether it be gravel or um, some sort of fencing or trees and bushes among fencing, etc. But then something like stairs is something you might want to hire, especially if you're going to go into the side of a hill um, or around the side of the hill. You might want to hire somebody for. Also, there's probably permits that you have to get because of erosion concerns and all of the other HOAs and all these other things. But if you do it yourself, keep in mind, it's not like you see it on TV. We no. built a little patio with a planter. They did it on this old house in 15 minutes. It took us seven days. We built a patio? No, no, no. Back on the farm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 15 minutes, I had it done on the TV. We, we spent about seven days working on that thing. I was going to say, I don't remember building a patio no, with you. No. But sometimes I forget things. Yeah. So. yeah we could have built the patio <laughs> in, in 2013. You would never remember. So there you go. I think I remember that. Oh, gazebos and uh, a pergola. Pergola. Yeah, so this is something that brings it brings an indoor element to the outdoors, All right? Um, and it can protect you from possible rain or provide shade, um, add value to the property. All of these things actually do add value to the property, right? Yeah, but uh, a gazebo or a pergola is kind of a, a bigger uh, stepping uh, attribute to your property, and with a with a pergola, you can. If based on where you're at, your region, you can have things grow, uh, vines and grow over top of it and create a living roof on your pergola. Yeah. And you could even do, I, this isn't mentioned here, but I think it's part of hardscaping would be a small greenhouse or like an entertainment greenhouse. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine how that's not because it is a hard. It's a, it's a permanent fixture. Yeah, it's a permanent fixture. Or just, you know, if you do have a greenhouse, maybe use it. In the spring for your plants, but then the rest of the year use it for... Well, in the um, fall, it'd be a gathering spot uh, in, in the Midwest, uh, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company. They do fabulous mm-hmm. work on very est- est- 
ple- eye pleasing greenhouse features. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can check them out. So then there's arbors. So arbors are, you might think, do you mean trees? No, arbors are um, basically like, um, I can't think of the word. Arch, pergola. Like an arch. Yeah, like an arch. A so, pergola is typically four poles in most instances with a slanted roof or a slanted wood that goes high point to low. A uh, ar- uh, Arbors are more smaller and have a typically arch perspective that would go over How a walkway. How do you know so much about pergolas? Why, why does that matter to it's, you? Because it's weird. <laughs> it's weird that I know what we're talking about. Yeah, like I didn't know that you knew about pergolas. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. You didn't remember doing a patio in 2013, so <laughs> well, we yeah, checkmate do, there. Do you have a pergola somewhere that no, you're, not, you're no. not talking about? But uh, no? we're just trying to draw a picture in the listener's mind of what a pergola and an arbor arbors are. Okay. Because they're very different. And, and cost is very different as well. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. And, and But an arch is something that you may see leading into a fenced-in uh, flower garden or a rose garden. So you That's what I envision an arch and having climbing roses over top of that archway as you're walking through the the white picket fence right okay yeah white picket fence well i don't know did you want did you want to like draw a plan up or no no i'm just saying all right so Um, uh, so so hard yeah go ahead so we have those and then an outdoor kitchen i think you can kind of figure that out it would be something where you have your grill space and then um, oh, you can get elaborate. Have in, have yeah. a refrigerator underneath the the cook area. You know, yeah, that's. Uh, but that's but that's also part of yeah. hardscaping, and um, a lot of times people do get elaborate with mm-hmm. them, and they are they because, are very pretty, and, and especially in the northern portions of the United States where you've got about four mu- four uh, three and a half months of really nice weather, and people utilize every moment they can outside they don't cook inside they go outside every moment that they can and create you know the outdoor kitchen dining experience because of the long cold winters that we experience up here absolutely it's the um you know we're gonna have dinner on the deck tonight and that's that's perfectly fine what also is perfectly fine is what walton's incorporated has to offer for you whether you are a camper or a kitchen cook or a butcher Spices, seasoning, tools, and everything in between, except for the meat. Yeah, they have um, equipment, seasoning, supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. You want to make snack sticks that people will actually like. Walton's created MeatJustSticks.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. They even have a full line of meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers to, stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's everything but the meat. That's Walton'sInc.com or MeatJustSticks.com. You can use code GROW50, GROW50 to save 10% off your orders of $50 or more. When we come back, it's all about rain burrows, the goods and the bads. You're tuned in to the Guardian with Joy and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Grip Sticks produces American-made products with sleek designs and quality materials. Based and manufactured in Utah, they have high-quality and durable products that last a lifetime. They're built beyond tough. Their wool socks come from Rocky Mountain source materials, are soft and comfortable, keep your feet warm and dry, and come with a lifetime guarantee. Even for the most sensitive toes, these socks are made for everyone. High-quality wool socks make a huge difference for happy feet. They fit in with all the many things you do from around the house to the outdoors and beyond. They are comfortable and long-lasting. These socks are great for gardening because they keep your feet so comfortable no matter the conditions outside. It's hard to overstate how amazing these feel to have warm, dry feet as you work in your garden. Designed and manufactured in-house for the best results and quality every time. When you purchase from Grip6, you're supporting long life cycle products and American-made manufacturing. Check out their belts, wallets, and socks at grip6.com. Use coupon code RADIO15 to save 15% off your order at grip6.com. Fleet Farms Garden Center is now open. Stop in to check out their selection of nursery quality plants available at low prices. All of their plants are grown in the Midwest and their vegetables are insecticide free. Choose from annuals, perennials, shrubs, trees, and more. Plus take care of your lawn with grass seed fertilizers, lawnmowers, and string trimmers. Get everything you need to keep your yard looking great at Fleet Farm, your lawn and garden headquarters. Chapin has the tools for planting your garden and keeping it growing all season long. Whether your garden is big or small, Chapin has sprayers and spreaders for fertilizing, weed, and pest control. 
watering, and seeding. You can find Chapin products at your local hardware store, big box retailer. You may visit them also online at ChapinMFG.com to learn more and buy online. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomingeasyplants.com. Mantis Tillers, the premium long-lasting gas-powered tillers, are the perfect solution for any garden. This Mantis machine is available with two or four cycle engines with a 19-inch or 16-inch tilling width. Your DIY companion in your garden and your lawn converts easily for edging, aerating, and more with optional attachments. Find details at mantis.com. Goodbye biting bugs and plant invaders. No More Bugs by Naturally Green Products is your answer. A product pioneered by the USDA in 14 years in business, No More Bugs has been a favorite by consumers across the country. More than a repellent, it is safe for you, your plants, pets, and home. Visit nomorebugs.net. Free shipping on orders over $50. Use code FREESHIP for me. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit propluggercom The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Happy Leaf LED, Root Maker, Jung Seeds, Tree Hugger Sprinklers, Verlo Mattresses, Farmer's Defense, Pomona Universal Pectin, Natural Green Products, Mantis Tillers, Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. We're going to talk about pros and cons to rain barrels. But first, a message from our good friends at Farmer's Defense. Farm and garden in the ultimate comfort. Farmer's Defense has lightweight and durable sleeves made to protect you against the elements while farming. Farmer's sleeves offer unparalleled protection of arms and skin for any farmer, gardener, or outdoor worker. Say goodbye to irritated skin and sunburns in the garden. Their sleeves offer cooling comfort and protection against the elements outdoors. An alternative to thick clothing, Farmer's Defense is made of wicky material with UBF protection factor of 50 plus to protect you from allergens and scratches. To find all their great products and more, visit FarmersDefense.com. Well, rain barrels is a great way in order to utilize what nature provides when nature decides to provide the moisture from the sky. Now, disclaimer or asterisk to this conversation, based on where you're at, you may or may not be able to legally harvest rainwater that comes off your roof for your property. Your mileage may vary, and G. Gordon Liddy was a great uh, talk show host, conservative talk show host in the 90s, and his famous line was, shoot it, shovel it, and shut up about it. So if you get away with it and don't tell anybody about it, you're probably better off. But we're going to talk about rain barrels, the pros and cons here. Yeah, so one of the pros is it's a great way to get additional water. And I think that seems pretty obvious, but maybe people don't think about that. They think about like, yes, I want to collect rainwater, but they don't think about the convenience of it. And right. um, that you can... You can use a lot of creative ways to to get water. And there's also, if you're like, I just don't like the look of a rain barrel, there's options. There's many options. It's not just a blue or white barrel that you shove in the corner of your home or outside of your home to capture the rain off the gutter. There are very aesthetic, pleasing types of rain barrels that if you didn't know, you would never guess it was a rain barrel. Those do come with a cost, but if you're interested in hiding it or uh, disguising it in a way that people or you don't want to notice it, that can be done. Absolutely. So there's different, there's even like um, 
kind of, I guess maybe more of like a, nah, well, I think a cistern is more. Cistern is something that goes under the house, kind of in a basement yeah. where you pump the, the rain goes down through the gutter system, collects in an indoor area in the basement and then it's pumped and utilized for multiple uses right, this so is now, a very old style way yeah. of, of water collection i think our our place here is a cistern or something i don't know um there's that water hole in the basement that was where coal for the oh. furnace was all right so <laughs> anyway um not a cistern but now that are... we get done with our family meeting on the air <laughs> There are like terracotta style yes, rain barrels and yes, yep. some like clay. You can find a lot of different options or you could even, if you're like, you know, this rain barrel is plain, you could paint it yourself. Yeah. Uh, rain barrels are utilized in some aspects in community gardens uh, about, about, uh, in ways of capturing the rain. Now, one of the concerns that people may have in a rain barrel is if it is transparent in color such as white, algae can develop. Algae, it can be harmful to plants and stunt their growth in large quantities of algae. If you just got a little algae here or there, it's not going to hurt the plants as if you're just, you know, gushing algae water, you know, just the slime out of it. Uh, the algae water absorbs the nutrients meant for the plants. So you would have to kind of uh, be aware of that. There are ways in which to control it. Um, some people will put uh, an aeration system in their opaque or, or transparent rain barrel and put certain type of fish that will eat the algae, but you got to have an aeration in order to keep them alive. Um, you can uh, also mosquitoes is a concern. So you want to make sure you keep all areas that are opened to the like a downspout where it goes in screen that off. So the mosquito larva cannot develop in there. And if done correctly, you're going to have no problems with it whatsoever. But rain barrels can be, you know, you're looking at 20, 50, 55 gallon or larger. Right. And that's kind of going into so talking about the algae is that the water isn't clean enough for drinking. Yeah, it's not palatable. Uh, yeah. that, that's pa 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 palatable. Portable. 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 Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So Word of the day. Now you not saying that you couldn't take that water and put it through like a filter of some sort um, or like a cleaner to to turn into drinking Correct. water. But the proper filtration can turn any water into drinking water. But if you do want to collect rainwater for drinking water, there might be a better way or a, a more efficient way to to do so. If so, you're using it for animal uh, hydration, this is not a concern. Animals are going to be able to drink it just fine. It's where the human aspect comes in. Yeah, you don't want to give yourself some sort of sickness. Yes. So another pro is they're great for watering the garden. Um, even with that algae, the algae is just basically fertilizer. In, um, in small quantities. In small quantities, yes. And and the people there, if you go online and type in uh, in your search engine, water collection systems, there are some very elaborate ones that are multi-unit uh, where it fills, you know, eight, nine, ten barrels, and they have a pump system on it to where they can pump the water out into other areas. Some will have, what is it called, uh, Q... Uh, the big totes, they're like 275-gallon totes with a metal frame around it. I forget what they're called, but those people would use those as well to collect water. Um, IB, IBC totes, IBP, something like that, totes. Um, but any type of barrel, if you're not buying one at a, 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 a store that's designated for water capturing and you're getting it secondhand, you want to be very aware of what was in that barrel prior to you using it, even if you're not going to use it for drinking or watering animals. If it was used to carry motor oil or bleach or something, you you don't want that to be leaching back in the water and you're watering plants with any type of that. You want to make sure whatever yeah. it was was food safe and uh, uh, materials. Absolutely. And... I did want to mention if you're trying to figure out where to get rain barrels from, yes. you can often find them with your local municipality. You can give them a call and see if they know where to find them. It's a lot of times it's like your waste, um, your uh, metro metropolitan waste. And uh, waste City district. Hall would probably be a good City start. Hall. Yep, absolutely. Or local organ like local organic stores, they they might be able to point in the right, right direction. Community garden head uh, head person of community garden. Right. So talking about community garden. Yeah. 
if you are relying on rain, rain barrel, the only way to, to water your garden and say you do have a community garden, that could be a problem if you're in a dry season or a drought. So you may not have enough water. You may have to incorporate whether you bring your own water in or if you were in a community garden situation, figuring out as a community how to get more water. Um, so that's one thing that's a major con. And I've heard about this from people who community garden. The lack of wa- the available lack of water. water. Yeah. So um, that's something to keep in mind. And they, I, I remember, I think we were at a talk, one person telling us something about how they had to bring in basically their own water. Uh-huh. That year. At a community garden. Yeah. Well, that's the problem because with the community garden, there are, hey, we've got this field here. Everybody's got your little plot of land. Great. But here's some issues we've got here. You can plant anything you want above this, you know, below this height and don't bother this person and do this and all that. But we don't have the water. Now, some I, I refer back to allotments over in the UK. There is multiple watering um, faucets in which people can it's a communal thing you go up and you fill your water cans up and you go water and it's it's kind of a a package deal but with community gardens here in the united states there is only so much water faucets available and some people will take advantage of the situation and let it run and hog all the water so nobody else can have access to it right and that's yeah that's those people are called jerks (laughs) And I would like to think that if you're participating in a community garden, you do want to give, you know, a, oh, you would a think. chance to the community. But there are just jerks everywhere, unfortunately. Uh, we're not going to focus on on jerky people, but it, it it can be a con if that is your your water well, with your water way with this way to get water. If you have issues with water, what do we do? We add mulch. Right, and that's a good that's a good point. Is adding the mulch can help keep the soil. Um, it's not going to fix, but it's going to greatly reduce the amount of moisture that is needed, and that may uh, allow you to stretch to the next time it rains. Right, and I just wanted to plug tree garden or tree uh, diaper. Here, tree diaper, um, because that is a way to water without having to have water. Right, naturally absorbs the water when it rains, or you water it and releases it as the soil needs it over thirty days. You can use code Garden fifteen to save fifteen percent at checkout at treediaper.com. All coupon codes you hear on the program. If you can't capture them because you're in the car, you just can't write it down. Our parent website, the Wisconsin vegetablegardener.com under the money tab at the top of the page is where you're going to find all the coupon codes. Absolutely. So then um, the another big pro to if if when you're using a rain barrel yes. is it's going to save you money on water if, if if it's a water if it's a nice yeah. not drought year um, and the way the way things have been changing you never know but it will save you water and save you money on water and that is definitely a bonus, I think, for a lot of people. And you can make your own rain barrel by using a very large trash can and doing some DIY stuff. It's very easy to do. Multiple uh, applications are shown online. Uh, you do want to drain it at the end of the season because uh, if you're in an area where freezing is a will happen, it will damage and break the barrel in, in most areas instances and then uh, you got a mess to, to deal with you got a barrel that doesn't hold water i i want to mention one more i guess kind of a con is that um you have to have a place to store it yes now you can you could essentially leave it outside well you could drain it flip it upside down and walk away there's yes, nothing wrong with that you could you might want to secure it a little bit if you live in a high wind area because it could travel with the wind um another con would be is if you have any sort of if you rent and maybe your yeah. and maybe your uh, landlord. landlord doesn't mind that you have a garden, but they're like, no, I don't want you cutting part of the gutter for a rain barrel. Um, that could be a problem too. So with definitely. any with any rain barrel application, you are going to have to have it elevated to a certain degree in order to get a hose or a watering can underneath it to allow the water to go, especially a water can. But if you're going to water with it, when it's at capacity, the elevation is needed for the gravity flow so you can get the water 5 or 10, 15 feet away. If it's at ground level, there's not going to be much unless you adapt it to using a pump and then that's potential electricity or if you bring a power station, it's a whole other thing. So elevation of it uh, is also the key. So there are some wonderful things in regards to using 
a rain barrel. There are also some things you want to keep in mind. And always, regardless of what advice we give you, take that and do your own research so you know what works best in your area. Well, now that the weather has warmed up, Holly, you will want to protect your garden with those vi- from those various beetles, weevils, boars, including those Japanese beetles. And what better way to prevent these pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larvae? Grub Gone is an easy to apply granule product that can spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by Phylum Bioproducts from a naturally occurring bacteria, Grub Gone is a non chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests, and it's safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. Oh, it, it, the beetles are already flying around. If you have the beetles already flying around your yard, Beetle Gone is the organic water dispersible powder that can be sprayed directly on your edible plants. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L O M bioproducts.com. When we come back, hang out with us. Don't go anywhere. Author Tony Gattatoni will be with us. You're tuned into the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use coupon code 10TG23 to receive 10% off your order at jungseeds.com. Again, that coupon code is 10TG23. Going on vacation and can't find a plant sitter? Check out Tree Diaper. It can provide perfect soil moisture for plants for weeks, even months. Use coupon code GARDEN15 to save 15% off at TreeDiaper.com. Aqua-Mart.com has everything you need for eye-pleasing outdoor water features on your property. For over 25 years, we've been creating and field testing beautiful water features in order to provide you with the most reliable products and best value in the industry. From easy-to-install pond and water filled kits to pumps, fish food, and more, you'll find everything you need to install and maintain a naturally balanced water feature in your yard. Make your backyard a true oasis and maintain it well. Visit Aqua-Mart.com to shop for all your needs. Deer Defeat is an all-natural based animal repellent to keep deer and rabbits away from your valuable plants that is odorless after 30 minutes and dries clear. It creates a continuous invisible shield to protect your plants. Works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Will not clog your sprayer. Apply to your property without environmental damage. You can spray directly onto your plants up to flowering, then apply around your plants to continue protection. No need to reapply. Money back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use coupon code RADIO to save 10% off your order. You put a lot of time and energy in your garden, but without a rescue Japanese beetle trap, you can kiss that hard work goodbye. Asparagus annihilated. Raspberries ravished. Green beans, forget about it. Get those little invasive pests out of your garden and send them where they belong inside a rescue Japanese beetle trap. Now with available refill lures, rescue Japanese beetle traps can be used for multiple seasons. They're made in the USA by the makers of the popular rescue fly and yellow jacket traps. Learn more at rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E dot com. You know what's different about Verlo mattress? Everything. Like no price gouging, no shenanigans, none of the shady dealings of other mattress chains and furniture stores that overcharge for virtually the same mattress. The ripoff stops here. Furlow makes every mattress they sell, so you get better quality, lower prices, and a lifetime comfort guarantee. Because at the end of the day, you don't deserve shenanigans, you deserve a good night's sleep. Wake up, sleep better. Verlo. Hi, I'm Russell Taylor with Live Earth Products. I'm a soil health expert here to help you. Live Earth Products specializes in soil conditioners and fertilizers that will help you build healthy and vibrant flower and vegetable gardens. As our name describes, Live Earth means healthy soils. Live Earth Products are humic and fulvic soil amendments and are all natural, organic, and directly from our family mine in Utah. Live Earth Products are easy to apply and the results will blossom right before your eyes. Live Earth Products can be applied throughout the growing season. So pick up Live Earth Humate Soil Conditioner and liquid six humic acid at your local garden center or on Amazon. Also available through our website, liveearth.com. That's L-I-V-E-A-R-T-H.com. Live Earth, here to bring vitality to life in your garden. 
The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Aqua-Mart, Soil Savvy, Wind River Chimes, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, Pro Plugger, Deer Defeat, Dripping Springs Oyas, Phylum Bioproducts. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Moments away, our guest Tony Gatoni will be with us, but first, a word from our good friends at Rise Gardens. Rise Gardens is a revolutionary hydroponic gardening system for your home. Instead of food traveling hundreds or even over a thousand miles before it hits your plate, harvest the veggies, herbs, and greens you need for dinner tonight in the comfort of your home. No green thumb required knowledge. Gardening made easy with the Rise Gardens app. Step-by-step guidance from seed to harvest, a complete garden on a shelf, and it comes with everything you need to grow healthy and the freshest food for you and your loved ones. Fully customize your garden to your needs and preferences. For more information and get your garden, Rise Garden, visit risegardens.com. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Tony Gatoni is known as the Resilient Gardener. She's an author, blogger, speaker, and lifelong gardener. Her book is The Lifelong Gardener, Gardening with Ease and Joy at Any Age. Welcome to the program, Tony. Thank you so much, Joey and Holly. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Well, we look forward to speaking with you, and thank you for taking time out of your day. And, uh... So and, and enlightening not only Holly and myself but all of our listeners. So great, yeah. Thank you. So, what sparked your inspiration to your for your seminar called "You Can Garden for Life"? And also, why are you known as a resilient gardener? Well, um, I had developed a, an astounding love for gardening, so I became a master gardener here in Marin County. And um, at graduation, we all sat around talking about ways that we were going to volunteer going forward with the information that we had learned. And I was still kind of stuck to figure out what was my area of expertise that I wanted to share with the community. And (laughs) uh, just a very short time later, my back went out in a very chronic way. And while I was recuperating... I remembered, um, I I just, well, I was looking out my window at my roses that needed to be deadheaded and realized that I couldn't get out there to do that, that I had to find a way to adapt. And in that moment, I remembered an article that I had read and saved on adaptive gardening. So... I used the remainder of the time, which was several weeks where I was recuperating from this back injury, researching adaptive gardening. And I realized that I wasn't alone, that 85% of people out there have back pain at some point or another in their lives. And so I wanted to find a way that I could help other gardeners to accept their physical limitations that that they may experience and to be able to adapt so they can keep gardening. Uh, And I called myself the resilient gardener mainly because I knew in, in my heart that I needed to find a way to become resilient And when I looked hard and fast at what the word resilience means, is being able to um, adjust and get past physical challenges, tragedy, loss, and to be able to keep going. And that's kind of what I adapted into my, my program. You can garden for life because I really felt that I could help other gardeners find the creative ways to get to get it done, no matter what was going on in their body. Well, let's talk about uh, some of some of those ways for people who may think they can't garden anymore. What can they do to possibly get back into gardening, whether maybe not as what they once did, but to get them back out and being active again? Sure, sure. Well, I'm a firm believer that you attack the elephant one toenail at a time. (laughs) I mean, we all used to be able to go out, you know, when I was in my 40s, I could go out and I could garden all day, all weekend, 
days in a row, and I just can't do that anymore. Your mind says you can, but your body says you can't. Right. My mind still thinks I'm 40. My body says, really? (laughs) You've got to be kidding. (laughs) So I think it's important to look at, you know, getting back to that elephant one toenail at a time. What can you possibly accomplish today that's realistic in a shorter period of time so that you can pace yourself and get something done, but knowing that you can't do it all, reward yourself at the end with a glass of wine or a cup of tea and appreciate the work that you did do. One of the things that I've, I've done over the years that I love to suggest to friends is when you think you can't garden anymore, invite some friends over to help you. Have a garden party, a garden work party. So in other words, have a couple of projects figured out that you would love some help with. And then feed them because every gardener I know loves to eat. (laughs) Right. And we once had a garden party where we served salads with everything fresh from the garden. And we included a basil lavender lemonade. Oh. That that was a huge hit. And then when a couple of the guests left, we added some vodka to to (laughs) it. And hey, the garden party was a huge success. So that's that's a way, you know, a couple of ways that they can get back into gardening when they feel like they they just can't handle it I'm, themselves anymore. I'm reminded by a um, a phrase that a, a Euro, Euro, European allotment gardener uses. He says, "Do a, do it a little, but do it often." Yes, exactly. That's what it's all about. One toenail at a time. Yeah. You know, you don't have to do it all today. Yeah. There's always tomorrow. You, you want it all done today, but it's a three year project, so you got to pace yourself. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. Sure. So tell us about your book, The Lifelong Gardener Garden with Ease and Joy at Any Age. Who would get the most benefit from this book? And what is something that would spark the interest of our listeners to go pick up a copy? Well, I think, you know, gardeners of all ages can benefit by this book. Even children of gardeners can benefit by this book. I talk to a lot of seniors who, you know, are frustrated that their bodies are changing, yet they want to keep gardening. And, you know, occasionally I get emails from people saying, oh, my gosh, I just, uh, you know, I just had a hip replaced but my my caregiver, I'm teaching her how to how to do my garden <laughs> so that, you know, I can't bend over to do it, but I can point real well. Right. And I'm teaching her to garden for me. And it works out really well. Um, I, I, I think more than anything else, you know, I like to suggest intergenerational gardening. Uh, my dear friend and photographer for my book, uh, my friend Heidi Hohenberger, she she got inspired when when I asked her to to help me with the photographs, and she started getting back into gardening, thinking that she had given it up. But through the course of our working together, she invited her sister, her niece, and her grandniece over, and they totally planted her garden for her, and they had so much fun learning to garden together and you know at the end they would have lunch or dinner and then each of them would try to uh, divide up their harvests so it was just a great way for them for her to be able to introduce the love of gardening and the joy of growing your own food and bringing in bouquets of flowers to decorate your home Um, She really got back into it as a result of bringing in her family. Um, And I hear from grandparents who love bringing in their grandkids to help them. I mean, why not? They're short. (laughs) (laughs) They can do a lot of the things that you would have to bend over to do. So, yeah, bring them on. (laughs) So let's talk about that back saving. What are some back saving tips that you can offer not only the older generation, but everybody? Because if we don't do it right to begin with, we're going to injure ourselves and it won't heal very well for the rest of our lives. Exactly. 
Exactly. Well, I think, you know, the first thing that I would suggest to people is before you go out to garden, warm it up. In other words, take five minutes, 10 minutes, do some stretching, some yoga, some Tai Chi, even turn on some rock and roll (laughs) and dance for a few minutes as just as a means to warm up your body. So you're not stiff going out there to, to begin gardening. And then once you're out there, you go from warming it up to switching it up. And this is where I like to uh, give people the 20-20-20 rule. And this was given to me by a physical therapist who happened to be in one of my seminars. And I, and I, and I asked her if I could use it because I think it was such sage advice that it's the repetitive movement that we do in the garden that can cause pain. So do what you need to do. You know, do your your breaking, you know, of the leaves that keep coming down, God bless them, uh, for like 20 minutes. And then put the rake down and maybe get down on your hands and knees if you can. Do some weeding or some planting for about 20 minutes. And then change the muscle groups again. Stand up, you know, do some pruning of flowering shrubs. Anything you can do to switch it up so you're not doing the same repetitive movement over and over and over again. And then the third part is what I call garden up. And I'm a firm believer in elevated raised beds, not just raised beds that are eight or 10 inches on the ground, but elevated, hopefully, to waist high so that you can plant tend and harvest without bending over or getting down on your hands and knees. Gardeners can accomplish the same thing by having wall planters, hanging baskets, or planting on their pergolas and trellises. The main thing is that if you've got back issues, the main thing is to try to find as many ways as you can to stand up when you're gardening because it's the it's the bending over that 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 just gets to you. So warm it up, switch it up and garden up. <laughs> that's that's great advice. So for some reason, people often think that gardening has to be this really hard task and using any sort of aid or helpful tool or making your garden uh-huh. work for you is somehow cheating or maybe they feel ashamed of themselves for having to do that. Can you give some words of encouragement to help folks feel empowered to make their gardens work for them and they don't, they don't have to, you know, make it a grueling effort and they can actually enjoy it? Well, first of all, I, you know, I really like to encourage people to, you know, come to the understanding that asking for help, there's no shame in that. Asking for help, you'd be surprised how many people are more than happy to help if you would just ask. I know it sounds really simple, but there's a lot of people that are used to being so independent, especially boomers, you know, really (laughs) independent people that just, you know, God, I can do I can do it all. And they and, and we did for years and decades But you get to that place where you have to say, "Hmm, okay, (laughs) the thing that I used to love to do, let's say it's, you know, you're done with all your spring planting and you want to spread mulch in order to maintain moisture in in the ground. Or um, you you just want to be able to finish how your garden looks when the mulch is all spread, but you can't lift the bags anymore. Uh, you know, go to next door, go to a neighbor and say, you know, do you know of a kid I can hire to just do this for me? You know, and spend a few bucks and have somebody do it for you. Have somebody do the heavy lifting that's become problematic. And then the other thing that I like to suggest to people is you can be empowered when you go into your tool shed. <laughs> I'm a real tool geek. And <laughs> I I find it really empowering to go in and get rid of tools that don't work anymore. Maybe they're rusted. 
maybe they just, you know, they just don't fit your hand anymore. And I like to, I like to get rid of things, you know, let go of things that don't work anymore and find tools that either are multi-purpose or they're just really such a good tool that they really work for you. For example, a, a reversible kneel, kneeler bench. I have, I live in a very, very tiny piece of property. I have three reversible kneeler benches because there, there's always one close by when I do need to kneel down or I can reverse it. I can turn it upside down and I can sit on it next to a raised bed. That's a multi-purpose tool that can empower you so that you can do whatever you need to do in that moment. And it's kind of the same thing with, gosh, I've been doing, um, I live in California, so we've been doing a lot of firescaping and adapting our landscape to be smart from a wildfire's point of view. And I recently found a ratchet lopper that is my new absolute 100% favorite tool. It's by the Ironwood Tool Company. And this ratchet lopper, you know, it's shorter than a lot of loppers that are on the market. And it's quite lightweight, but it has a six-way ratchet. So you can take a branch that is an inch and a half thick, and it cuts it without hurting your hand and to me that's that's quite empowering also to be able to stop wrestling with heavy hoses you know give up those heavy rubber hoses and switch to lightweight hoses and i guarantee gardening and your life in the garden will become easier and you're going to look forward to it rather than dreading it it's a that's a big, big part is finding joy and ease in the garden. Well, Tony, we greatly appreciate the all this information you've given to us. How can our listeners find out more about you, and where can they capture or, or purchase your book at? Well, if they can spell my name, they can find me. It's T O N I, and the last name is Gattoni, G A T T O N E. So they can go to my website. TonyGatoni.com, and they can buy a book there, and I will autograph it, make it out to the recipient, and mail it the next day. While they're on my website, they can sign up for my newsletter, and they will automatically receive my free 12-page ebook called The Pathways to Adaptive Gardening. And then I also made it really simple for people to find me on social media because all of my social media handles, like, you know, Instagram.com, it's followed by forward slash Tony Gatoni. Even my YouTube channel ends with my name. So I tried making it as simple as I could for people to find me and follow me. And it seems to be working. (laughs) Well, Tony, we thank you so much for the time you've offered us and the education you've provided for Holly and myself. We thank you for that. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to spread the word. Absolutely. And when we come uh-huh. when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. You're tuned in to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Dripping Springs Oyas Clay Pot Irrigation solves the watering needs for gardens, bushes, new trees, and more. An ancient irrigation system we brought to America. Dripping Springs Oyas, O-L-L-A-S, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Check us out. Garden like a pro in three easy steps and receive customized fertilizer recommendations for your garden or lawn. Soil Savvy helps you determine what nutrients your plants need to thrive. Never again overapply nutrients they don't need. A patented process that makes you a smart gardener. To get your soil test kit, go to mysoilsavvy.com. 
Wind River Chimes creates a symphony in any space. Chimes that are inspired by nature and designed to make the natural world even more inspiring. Music speaks to everyone. Individually handcrafted in Virginia for over 35 years and hand tuned for an exceptional precision and lasting beauty. Because in life, the winds of change are always moving. But no matter where they carry you, Wind River Chimes will always be the inspiring harmony. With a large selection and customization options, you will find the sound that soothes you. Visit windriverchimes.com to shop and find out more. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you the harvest you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO23 to save 15% off your order at rootmaker.com. Tree Hugger Sprinklers are the ultimate watering device for either your newly planted or established trees and shrubs. Our sprinklers open and close around the trunk of your tree and provide 360 degrees of watering. With our adjustable valve, you can direct the water to your tree's targeted saturation zone. They come in three sizes, 7, 11, and 15 inches. You can purchase a tree hugger sprinkler at your local garden center, feed store, or hardware store. Go to treehuggersprinklers.com to find a retailer close to you. Or you can buy it directly from Amazon or treehuggersprinklers.com. If you're an independent nursery, garden center, hardware store, or feed store, you will want to stock this product. Contact the good people at Tree Hugger Sprinklers and they will get you set up. Your tree's best friend. TreeHuggerSprinklers.com Blue Ribbon Organics providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardeners, farms, landscaping, and more. To find our products nearest you, visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Dripworks, Rise Gardens, Grip6, Bloomin' Easy, Fleet Farm, Waltons Incorporated, Blue Ribbon Organics, Tree Diaper. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. Time for your garden questions, our garden answers. If you've got a question, send it on over to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Leave a message if we can't get you on the air, and we'll get you the answer in which you have asked. So the question is sponsored, this question is sponsored by Fleet Farm and FleetFarm.com. How often do I water rosemary to avoid root rot in my containers? Okay. So rosemary, the, the, the problem with rosemary is if you water it too frequently, it will develop root rot and then you've got a dead plant on your hand. Uh, so, or your hand. So what you want to do is water rosemary generously. Soak it uh, so the water is running out of the bottom of the pot. Wait a little bit. Water it again at that same time. So trying to get the whole bulb of soil saturated. T uh, typically, rosemary in the summer, you're going to water it every uh, once every uh, week. And then in the spring or fall, you're going to water it about once every two weeks. And if it's outside, you probably it's going to go into dormancy if you're in a climate in which it can be uh, it will recover and come back. It'll go in the dormancy. If it's in a really cold area, you're not going to get it to come back unless you bring it indoors. And if you bring it indoors, you want to water it um, uh, and keep it on the dry side, but you do want to add water to it, keep it in a south-facing window, and you can have rosemary all winter long. Okay, okay, great. Um, so recently we got a rain barrel and was so excited to use it. But I've heard so much about the dangers of using rain barrel water on your veggies since it's not potable and the algae can be harmful to plants. Is there any truth to this or is it like um, maybe I should just be aware of something? Well, just be aware of it. Don't worry over small amounts of algae in your rain barrels. They provide fertilizer boost to your plants. But if the water uh, it has a bad odor in it, it's just caked with algae, then that is going to be a problem. You want to drain your rain barrel out. Um, and scrub it out, or you can mix a solution of three quarters cups of bleach to one gallon of water, three quarter cups of bleach with one gallon of water, and then uh, scrub the internal internal portions of that rain barrel out to get all the algae. Like we talked in the first segment, typical algae development occurs when the rain barrel is transparent and can get sunlight internally, and that's when the algae is developing. 
All right. One thing you can do with a zucchini that uh, comment came in. One thing you can do with zucchini that you didn't mention last week is make zucchini flour. It's also called uh, Amish flour, Holly. Uh, it was uh, or uh, troop flour. It's a staple of the Amish and the Mennonites households. Uh, you can take large, you can take zucchini, chop it up very finely, dehydrate it, and then grind it up into a flour-like consistency. Yeah, and you can use, um, you can replace up to a third of the flour in most recipes without any problems. So, I guess, and plus, it, it could maybe somehow be incorporated if you don't utilize gluten flour. You could right. probably get creative and. And it could be gluten-free. great for breading fish, mm-hmm. um, tortillas, uh, breads. It makes uh, great dumplings, and uh, you add it to your brownies. And most time, you, you're not going to notice it's zucchini. That's the benefit of it. You can turn in that flour aspect of it, and you don't know what you, you know. You don't know. So it's it's a good way to utilize some of that. So thank you for that comment. In regards, you know, and and we talk about that when we do a show, we only have a certain amount of time in order to cover. You know, 37 things, so we have to decide what are the best eight things to talk about yeah. in in the block of time that we're allowed, because you could talk about zucchini for a whole hour and still not cover every aspect of it that you want to or you feel you need to. Well, with that being said, Holly, we are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Miss any portion of the program today or would like to revisit it, you can do that by going to our parent website and searching our or, or parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com and see, clicking on the season seven tab at the top of the page. Or you can go to your favorite you can search engine and search for the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. You could also send us an email to Garden Talk Radio at Gmail dot com and we will send you a link to this program. Tune into the program next week when we will be discussing composting and how much work is really needed for a good garden. Our guest will be author Stephanie Toro, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. <laughs>